why I have come to accept the idea that a gold standard is the only standard that can be used if you want a free market and you want a sound, healthy economy. There is no other power greater than the power over money, the power to create and contract the money supply, the power to control the purchasing power of your money. Throughout history, this has proven to be the most sought after monopolistic power of man. You said we shouldn't be nearly as involved as we are in foreign affairs and, and support, defense support, military for mm -hmm. our allies. Well, what, if, what if the Soviets started sending the money if we didn't send the money? And, and, and the Soviet system would fall even more rapidly. They can't even feed themselves. We're financing the Soviet system, and too. You wouldn't worry about that as president of the United States? Well, I would worry if they threatened my security and the security of the country. But I think it would be helpful to bankrupt the Soviet Union if they want to spend all their money because they couldn't win in Afghanistan and they're broke and now they're getting more loans from the Soviets. But they could the there are 38 million people today that have no health care after the government's been in health care for 45 years. Price has gone up, the quality has gone down, the distribution has been eliminated. There are more people without health care now since the government's been in the business. Ron, why do we keep getting into these foreign predicaments? I think there's a basic flaw in our policy. We've gone astray. Uh, we do not follow the Constitution. We do not follow our American traditions. And especially in this century, our policy has changed. We have become an interventionist government. I believe we became interventionist in many areas. Not only does our government intervene in our personal lives, our government intervenes in the economy, and it intervenes in the internal affairs of other nations. No longer do we take the advice of our founders and what was uh, traditionally the American non-intervention uh, foreign policy and uh, I think it's going to continue uh, this is not a tactical fight this is not a discussion of when you should go in the left and the right so often argue about well we should go in he's the enemy we'll attack him but we'll let this person alone and then they switch and they flip-flop and we lead to a disaster we don't know why we go into these areas and it leads to disasters like Korea and Vietnam We allied ourselves in the 1980s with Iraq in its war with Iran and assisted Saddam Hussein in his rise to power. As recent reports reconfirm, we did nothing to stop Hussein's development of chemical and biological weapons and at least indirectly assisted in their development. Now, as a consequence of that needless intervention, we're planning a risky war to remove him from power. And as usual, the probable result of such an effort will be something our government does not anticipate, like a takeover by someone much worse. As bad as Hussein is, he's an enemy of the Al-Qaeda, and someone new may well be a close ally of the Islamic radicals. Although our puppet dictatorship in Saudi Arabia has lasted for many decades, it's becoming shakier every day. The Saudi people are not exactly friendly toward us and our military presence on their holy soil is greatly resented. This contributes to the radical fundamentalist hatred directed toward us. Another unfavorable consequence to America, such as a regime change not to our liking, could soon occur in Saudi Arabia. It is not merely a coincidence that 15 of the 9-11 terrorists are Saudis. The Persian Gulf War, fought without a declaration of war, is in reality still going on. It looks like the 9-11 may well have been a battle in that war perpetrated by fanatical guerrillas. It indicates how seriously flawed our foreign policy is. In the 1980s, we got involved in the Soviet-Afghanistan War and actually sided with the forces of Osama bin Laden, helping him gain power. This obviously was an, an alliance of no benefit to the United States, and it has come back to haunt us. Paul. You voted against the war. Why are all your fellow Republicans up here wrong? 
That's a very good question, and you might ask the question, why are 70 percent of the American people now wanting us out of there, and why did the Republicans do so poorly last year? So I would suggest that we should look at foreign policy. I'm suggesting very strongly that we should have a foreign policy of non-intervention, the traditional uh, American foreign policy and the Republican foreign policy. Throughout the 20th century, the Republican Party benefited from a non-interventionist foreign policy. Think of how Eisenhower came in to stop the Korean War. Think of how Nixon was elected to stop the mess in Vietnam. How did we win the election in the year 2000? We talked about a humble foreign policy, no nation building, don't police the world. That is a conservative, it's a Republican, it's a pro-American, it follows the founding fathers, and besides, it follows the Constitution. I tried very hard to solve this problem before we went to war by saying, Declare war if you want to go to war. Go to war, fight it, and win it. But don't get into it for political reasons or to enforce UN resolutions or pretend the Iraqis were a national threat to us. Congressman Paul, Pete from Rochester Hills, Michigan, wants to ask you this. If you were president, would you work to phase out the IRS? <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> That's what they call a softball. And, and you can only do that if you change our ideas about what the role of government ought to be. If you think the government has to take care of us from cradle to grave, and if you think our government should police the world and spend hundreds of billions of dollars on a foreign policy that we cannot manage, uh, you can't get rid of the IRS. But if you want to lower taxes, and if you don't want the government to quit printing the money to come up with shortfall and cause all the inflation, you have to change policy. Dr. Paul, how do you reconcile this moral, moral uh, leadership kind of role of conservatism with the very libertarian strain of conservatism, the Barry Goldwater conservatism that you represent? How do you put together what he just said within what you believe in a unified national purpose? Well, well, you do it by an understanding what the goal of government ought to be. If the goal of government is to be the policeman of the world, you lose liberty. And if the goal is to promote liberty, you can unify all segments. The, uh, the freedom message uh, brings us together. It doesn't divide us. I believe that when we overdo our military uh, aggressiveness, what it does, it actually weakens our national defense. I mean, we stood up to the Soviets. They had 40,000 nuclear weapons. Now we're fretting day in and day and night about third world countries that have no army, navy, or air force, and we're getting ready to go to war. But the principle, the moral principle, is that of defending liberty and minimizing the scope of government. And I'm sorry, every, we have to go on. We have to go on. Uh, Congressman Paul, uh, Bob Hussey from Minnesota writes that perhaps the most important skill a good president must have is the ability to make good, sound decisions, often in a crisis situation. Please cite an example when you had to make a decision in crisis. I wonder if he's referring to a political decision like running for office or something like that. Um, I guess in medicine I made a lot of critical decisions. I mean, uh, you're called upon all the time to make critical life-saving uh, decisions. But uh, I, I can't think of any one particular event where I made a critical uh, decision that affected a lot of other people. But uh, I think all our decisions we make in, in politics are, are critical. My major decision, political decision, which was a constitutional decision, was to urge Paul, for five years that this not country not go to war in Iraq. We have Mrs. Reagan here. The will not focus on her, but I will tell you, it will now focus on you. Mrs. Reagan wants to expand federal funding of embryonic stem cell research. Will that progress under your administration? Dr. Paul, yes or no on federal Pro funding? Programs are like this are not authorized under the Constitution. The trouble with this, pro tr uh, issues like this is in Washington, we either prohibit it or subsidize it. Right. And the market should deal with it and the states should deal with okay. it. Okay, let's start with a, uh, an enjoyable down the line, okay? Here, here. I want each uh, candidate to mention a tax he'd like to cut in addition to the Bush tax cuts, keeping them in effect. Well, in my first week, I already got rid of the income tax, so my second week, I would get rid of the inflation tax. It's a tax that nobody talks about. We live way beyond our means with a foreign policy we can't afford and an entitlement system that we have encouraged. We print money for it, the value of the money goes down, and poor people pay higher prices. That is a tax. It's a transfer of wealth from the poor and the middle class to Wall Street. Wall Street's doing quite well, but the inflation tax is eating away at the middle class of this country. We need to get rid of the inflation tax with sound money.